Learning clean code is one of the best tech career investments you can make. By spending just a little bit of time learning the fundamentals, you can 10x your skills and improve your code bases now and in the future. That's why I recently invited senior developer Michael onto the Scrimba live stream to share his advice on how to write top-notch code, whether you're a beginner, established in the industry, or even another senior. We know you're busy people, so we've condensed that stream down into four of our favorite tips for you to enjoy and hopefully learn from. Let's take a look. Clean code versus clever code <laughs> versus yeah. readable code. So you have code a lot of the time, but you could make shorter because you're a super duper whiz kid and you know how to do all of this in one night. But yeah. that might be difficult for other people to understand. I would say that probably you should try to avoid writing clever code unless it's required of you. Most people would try to say that well, clean code equals readable code and to a certain extent that's true. Although again, like um, let's define definition, like the clean code itself is a little phrase that coined, was coined by Bob Martin, I think. And he described a handful of approaches. And some people feel it's a bit like Old Testament Ten Commandments for mm -hmm. clean code. I would advise against taking those commandments as that religiously. Uh, you should probably just take it, you know, read about them, understand that they exist, take them as hints, uh, and use them accordingly. Again, a lot of people who disagree with some aspects of clean code, they would say that clean code and readable code are different. In which case, I would probably pick readable code, then clean code, then clever code. Yeah. But although, again, if you participate in, there are competitions, coding competitions, where you have to write a program in the least number of lines, clever code <laughs> is obviously the way to go. To comment or not to comment. Personally, I think you should comment, uh, especially to clarify. Someone previously mentioned that variables should uh, give intent. And uh, I think that variable, like comments, they should provide context around a certain decision. So if you just write fairly standard on-click event, there's not really much to comment there. Or if you're writing a node, <laughs> node server exactly. function. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. But if you require to, something is a little bit unusual or something feels a little bit hacky, then you should probably leave a comment to explain why a certain decision was made. Or for example, if there is like a value, just a random number assigned to something and you don't know why. Try to be a little bit compassionate to the other person who reads it later after you. If they imagine in their shoes, drop a link in the comment to the ticket that prompted for this number or this particular fix or this particular workaround and stuff. So leave as many breadcrumbs for other people as you can. Also, don't forget to remove comments. If all of a sudden you stumbled on a comment, it makes no sense. You ask your team around, what's this even about? If nobody knows anything, remove the comment. It's easier not to have that confusion. Or if the comment describes a piece of code underneath it, and the piece of code does something completely different to what the comment is describing. Yeah, I've seen that. Uh, then <laughs> remove that comment. You know, uh, remove that comment, or maybe update the code, or try to basically try to leave the place slightly cleaner than when you found it. Anna likes to add um, comments in places where I apply something new. So this is the comments from a learner's perspective. Well, really, mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. you never stop being a learner as a developer. Yeah, yeah. Do you? So when you review it a few days later, you don't mm -hmm. have to do the whole massive Google search again. That is a yeah. very good point. How many times have you Google searched and seen like you've clearly clicked the link before? Yeah. And you're like, yeah, <laughs> yes, very yeah. nice point. What about following a style guide? For example, Google, Airbnb, mm -hmm. et cetera, things that, you know, they're out there. Do you have a preferred one mm -hmm. or the most easy one for beginners to get started with? Good question. When I had a chance to pick, uh, we ended up picking Airbnb. But to be honest, most of the time, it's already picked for you and you just go along with it. When you pick a style guide like that, most of the time you have just the defaults and then you can create your own overrides after the style guide. So whichever you pick, that will make you much more comfortable to you. Like if you're the only person who works on that, pick any, pick, pick whatever you prefer. I personally would go with Airbnb, but to be honest, I don't even remember what it involves now. <laughs> I just remember that I used to pick it in the past. How do you write a commit message which is actually worth writing, I guess? I think it kind of depends on the workflow that you have with your team as well. If your team, for example, commits straight to like a branch and then it's pull requested to master, you know, you can discuss are we merging all of the commits or are we squashing the commits? If you decide that you squash all the commits, then you know you just 
have a branch name that is probably already templated for you. People have particular preference for like, naming of branches. Uh, and then you name PR. Then when you squish and merge, the name of that PR becomes your commit on, on the main branch. And that's kind of it. You know, it's fairly straightforward. Uh, and in that case, you can name your commit anything you want, uh, obviously within reason, but quite often if you have to debug some issue, there's not really more meaningful than try number one, try number two, try number three. If you, for example, working on your own, you can commit straight to the main branch. So you just go ahead uh, and try to be descriptive about what changes you've made. Some people like to prefix them uh, with like, is it a fix? Is it a feature? Is it uh, some particular release or something? So you try to prefix it to be descriptive. Um, yeah, just go ahead. I think is most of the time it's usually having again, again, you have a conversation with people you work with and you come up with some ground rules that all of you kind of agree on and that's it. That's it for Michael's top four tips on writing clean code. I hope you found it helpful. We'd love to hear your favorite tip in the comments. And if you have any of your own, don't forget to share those as well. And remember to hit subscribe for more top tips videos like these. See you next time.